I'm very hands-on by certain things, and they know it. You know, and I look at cleanness, I look at this, tents, look at everything. I don't play around there. I run a tight ship, tight, tight ship. On any given day, Lynn and Nakia Price perch on their spot in Houston's third ward. From their roost, Lynn's eagle eyes scan across a field of tables and tents known as the turkey leg hut. Now, you're probably used to eating or at least seeing people eat turkey legs at fairs and carnivals, but this isn't all fun and games to the prices. They've turned turkey legs into serious business. That ain't right. There you go. It was tender to their palate, but I won't let them eat it. I see everything go out. The only thing, only thing get past me is wind. I see everything. Everybody thinks I just sit here, but I can see every. It's the reason why I sit here. I'm at the level where I can see the top of a plate. I can see. I'm at the level where I can see a customer's face. I can be in a third tent and see if somebody frowns. Oh my God. I love it. I love. I love Boom. how excited he is. I love it. I love it. Boom. <laughs> You know, you can go to school, you can do this, but no books could have taught us this. No books. We ran a whole kitchen with no culinary experience. How did y'all get into turkey legs? And these aren't normal turkey legs. I think turkey legs got into us. <laughs> it's crazy, because it's not something that we thought out to do. Um, it was something that literally just happened. And it happened um, during rodeo season. We were shuttling people into the rodeo. That was um, our main focus at that time and we saw all the turkey legs that were on the ground that people didn't eat from the fair. Nasty, horrible, not tender. When Nakia and Lynn saw that bad turkey legs were being thrown away at the Houston Rodeo, they took up the entrepreneur's classic rallying cry. They thought, there's got to be a better way. And with little more than trial and error, they've made their giant stuffed turkey legs the talk of the town. You know, when we started, just word by word of mouth, strictly social media, before we knew it, it just, it took off. And it became something that, you know, bigger than what we could have ever imagined. It's still good. So how exactly do you stuff a turkey leg? How do you, how do you stuff a turkey leg? Well, <laughs> that's how you stuff it, right there. Look how, look how that meat falls off the bone right there. Mm. How'd you do that? You I can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Hold up, hold up, take that meat. Go ahead, shake it. There you go. Look at that. Oh, okay. So you just there you go. Like That's that. it. Taste that. Taste yeah. that juicy part. That's good. You're not going to give me the recipe of how you do all this. Yeah, right? we will. You will? We will. You're going to tell me how to do this? We will. You won't leave here. <laughs> Well, the prices aren't kidding when they say there's a secret to a tender turkey leg. We weren't allowed to see the smokers, or even to set foot in the kitchen, which pumps out giant trays of food well into the night. From burgers to seafood to veggies and steak, it is impossible to go home hungry. Every day is a feast, and more importantly, everyone is welcome. Race, color, food brings everybody together. And what's the vibe here? Family reunion, backyard party type vibe. It's, you know, good times, great vibes. This is the energy we like right here. You know, I set the tone for all families when they come in here. You know what I'm saying? I don't make nobody feel uncomfortable. I don't play cursing music. I don't do all that. If the turkey leg hut feels like a party in the Price's backyard, that's because it is. Lynn was born in this neighborhood, and Nakia has lived here ever since she attended U of H. The third ward is their home, and their restaurant is much more than a way to make a living. It supports a community that is standing tall on turkey legs. My mom still stays there, grew up here. Literally used to walk this block 14, 15 years old. Like I said, my mom's been here almost 60 years. Her parents were here 20 years. I think Almeida has probably been dear to us simply because this is where we actually met. Right, right here. Right here, the next block. Then on accident, just yeah, right here, accident. literally. Yep. Beyonce was raised, what, one mile away from here? Grew up with George Floyd right down the street as well, you know? So this is my backyard. I've been planted here. It's 
it's a responsibility. And it's not something that you take lightly, simply because you have so many people depending on you. So if we employ 175, and that's just with the restaurant, that's not including the food truck. So then imagine how many people are an extension of their family, how they're feeding their family based off of something that we've created. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it goes it goes deeper. So you have you, their, their family, their children, their, their, their parents. Then we can see, like, wow. High tide moves all boat. I don't give a damn how big the boat is. High tide moves all boats. It's about giving back and, you know, having the opportunity to uh, be a blessing to others and make other people smile. This is not something that we sought out to do. And so I just wonder, like, the favor that God has for us. I'm emotional because it's like, wow, wow, all these people are here lining up to eat something that we've created. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Good, huh? <laughs> I love that story. Me too, and we've got plenty more where that came from. Just click on the subscribe button and keep traveling with us.